Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Welcome to our new video. Today's video will be also on Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose and we will focus on whether Netaji was in Russia or not. But before starting this video, I wanted to thank you all. Uh, I stopped doing video almost three to four months back, but still I got good amount of crowd. Like it's not huge. Uh, yeah, I'm not a popular YouTuber, but at least one of my video got almost 1K uh, views, which is a very good encouragement for me. So in today's video, I will share three evidences on Netaji's presence in Russia after his alleged death in 1945 plane crash. Proof number one, Narendranath Shikdar's affidavit to Mukherjee Commission. Narendranath Shikdar was a journalist who uh, did his almost whole journalism career based on Moscow from uh, he was uh, he worked as a journalist uh, from based on Moscow from between 1966 to 1991. This person has shared uh, an affidavit to the Mukherjee Commission and it was it, it is it's available in uh, file number w 14112000 e So what was in this uh, affidavit? Narendra Sikdar in his affidavit mentioned a person called named Nikhil Chattopadha who was son of Birendra Chattopadha, a revolutionary who worked for CPI uh, during uh, like uh, do, be, before uh, Second World War was and was killed by Stalin in 1937. According to Mr. Nikhil Chattopadhyay, son of Virendra Chattopadhyay, he personally met with Mr. Subhash Chandra Bose, who was in exile in Russia in 1968 after the death of Mr. Savarkar. When he discussed with Netaji like why he Netaji is not going back to India. Netaji replied that he is fearing that if he came, if he come back or if he goes back to India, probably he will be treated as a war criminal and will be handed over to uh, probably uh, UK government or American government uh, according to uh, the war uh, crime law of Second World War. He was also mentioning uh, like when Netaji through Manchuria reached to uh, Russia, USSR, uh, the then USSR chief Stalin and Molotov, uh, who is like a close associate of Stalin, uh, sent uh, inf this information to India via uh, the then um, Indian ambassador Krishna Menon. Krishna Menon was in uh, he was in Paris. He came to London, and then ultimately there was a there was a discussion between Nehru, uh, Krishna Menon, and Stalin and Molotov, and it was said that uh, it was it was discussed, and it was said that to, uh, no, to not to disclose this news outside. This has uh, this information has evidence because this news has been came out into uh, both in uh, Indian newspaper during that time and as well in Russian newspaper of that time. So let's see what was actually mentioned uh, in Netaji archives for um, for that particular proof. Let's see. So friends, if you can see, I am in uh, netajipapers.gov.in, which is the official website for. Uh, National Archives. So if you see here in this page, uh, it was it was a bit of it from the Mr. Sarkar, which I already told and it's mentioning the Nikhil Chattopadhyay. Okay. And if you see this particular section, uh, just a sec and yep. Yeah, since Nikhilda was a keen admirer of Netaji, he passed his wife Tatiana to arrange a meeting uh, with Netaji. The meeting took place in the city OMSK on August 16, 1968 and was reported to me by Comrade Chandran, 
who was mentioned above was giving me information as advised by Nikhilda. And this was signed by Narendra Sikdar and it was submitted to Mukherjee Commission on 2 2 2 so This is proof number one where uh, an old journalist, 72 years of age, sending, uh, his, uh, sending letter to Mukherjee Commission with his firm belief that Nidaji was alive in Russia. Uh, of course, it's not a concrete proof, but uh, the person who is sending the letter to Mukherjee Commission doesn't have any uh, like agenda to say lie. So, second proof comes from renowned Netaji uh, investigator, Mrs. Dr. Purabi Roy. Dr. Purabi Roy was investigating about Netaji's presence in Russia and she actually uh, went to Russia and spent a quite significant time on in Russia while by by uh, for um, for investigating uh, on investigation about Netaji's presence there. But she was denied access to GRU archives. So GRU archive is the main Russian archives where all the war related documents are kept. So she was as she was uh, denied access. So she needs someone who can help her to get some information from GRU archive. So then she uh, met with Alexander Kaleskinov. But my friend Kuleshnikov, Alexander Kuleshnikov, who was that time the uh, uh, Warsaw Pact major? Dr. Purabi Roy requested uh, Alexander Kaleskinov to give at least one solid evidence, one document which mentioned the presence of Shubhas Chandra Bosch in Russia. And uh, Dr. Kaleskinov, uh, sorry, um, Mr. Kaleskinov, after uh, going to GRU and doing some investigation, uh, he confirmed that there was a lot of documents, but it was uh, very risky to go there and take a picture or take um, and take a copy of uh, pen and paper because it's a Russian archive. There was a lot of uh, security there, but. Kaleskinov actually handed one physical paper to Mr. Uh, Mrs. Purabi Roy, Dr. Purabi Roy, mentioning about uh, in, in this document basically uh, Stalin, Molotov and all the cabinets are discussing about a question which was like where to keep Chandra Bose and this document was dated in 1946 like, after the uh, date of plane crash. Vishinsky, Molotov and others discussing that where to keep Chandra Bose, October 1946. Final proof which I will talk about in today's video is like Netaji's aired speeches after 1945 from Russia. Netaji has actually, uh, according to that, um, the first broadcast was on 26 December 1945 where Shubhas Bose said, I am I am at present under the shelter of great world powers. My heart is burning for India. I will go to India on the crest of a third world war. It may come in 10 years or even earlier. Then I will sit on judgment upon those trying my main at Red Fort. Now the second broadcast on 1st January 1946 said, we must get freedom within two years. The British imperialism has broken down and it, was, it must concede independence to India. India will not be free by means of non-violence, but I am quite respectable to Mahatma Gandhi. The third and the final broadcast was in February 1946. The way he said, this is Subhash Chandra Bose speaking, Jai Hind. This is the third time I am addressing my Indian brothers and sisters after Japan surrender. The PM of England is going to send Mr. Patrick Lawrence and two other members from England with no object in view other than let British imperialism a permanent settlement by all means to suck the blood of India. So the mystery continues. But it was very mysterious that a person who is said as uh, dead on 1945 uh, can uh, do uh, the 
Oaken aired his uh, speeches three times, three times from uh, Russia. And hope you enjoyed this video. I have tried to give three proofs, uh, which is present in national archives. Uh, even Puravigo's claim was also um, documented in uh, Mukherjee Commission's National Archive file, uh, which is available for researchers in Netaji Papers. Uh, Netaji Papers uh, website. Happy Independence Day to all, and Jai Hind. Uh, if you have any suggestion for me, please let me know. I will work on it. Thank you. Goodbye.